But the first time I went there, um, they, uh, I, I had just learned how to play guitar. I was just learning about worship and I was visiting the villages of Northern India where there was a crazy revival happening among the Sikh peoples. And if you don't know what the Sikh peoples are, they're like, you, you'll probably meet one if you get a taxi ride in, in New York City. Like I they like have turbans kids. on, they're, they're really sweet people, but their, their religion is super dark. It's super gnarly. And uh, Amritsar is the kind of where, this, where the, the temple is. And yet there was a revival happening in North India where they were getting saved. And it was, God was showing up through visions and dreams and it was a powerful movement. And so we were going to these house churches. And so I show up in India and this pastor picks me up and he says, uh, we're gonna go, we have five church services today and I, you know, bring your guitar and I want you to play and share your story. And I just was like wide-eyed, you know, I'd never seen a revival in a place like that. I'd always wanted my whole life to go. So on the way to the first service, which is in I believe someone's he's backyard, in this story. he gets a call from somebody on his phone and we're on a rickshaw, which is a little bike, taxi bike, you know, in the village. And so we're sitting in the back of this, in this basket in the back of a guy that's pedaling us on a bike, which, and he gets a call and it's somebody screaming on the phone, screaming on the phone. I can hear it through and I'm like, what is happening? That's crazy. And he's like, all right, we have, and he turned to me, he said, okay, we have a little detour on the way to church. It's just going to take a minute. Don't worry about it. I'm like, all right. So we go to this house. I walk into this house and there is a five foot one woman with the reddest eyes I've ever seen screaming like a man, throwing dishes everywhere, fully demonically possessed. Like I'd never seen anything like that. It was like a horror movie. Like I, I didn't know that this could happen to people. I've never seen this level of demonic. And, and I walked right into the house and you could tell the guy was, knew that I was shocked. And he looked at me and he's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No problem, five minutes, five minutes, you know. And so this, this lady's in there and she's chucking plates and she's like getting knives out and it's crazy. And he's just all, this pastor I'm with, he's a G, you know. He's just cool and collect. He's like, five minutes, don't worry. He's like, and he takes me and he puts me into the corner of the room, over here in the corner of the room. And he's like, just sit there for a minute, it's five minutes, you know. He walks over, he starts having a conversation with the demon inside of the lady. And this was later translated back to me. And he's telling the demon, why are you in this woman? You're one of the easiest demons to come out. Just come out. And, he, and the demon goes, I'm not gonna come out. I've been inside of her for 15 years and it all leads to this moment today. And so the pastor is talking to the demon inside of the lady and he says, what do you mean meaning this to this moment? He said, I've built an altar in her, and I built an altar behind the house and I'm sacrificing her three children today. And the pastor looks at the demon and starts laughing and he goes, you ain't gonna do nothing. You're gonna come out is what you're gonna do. The demon starts screeching, I'm not gonna come out, I'm not gonna come out. The pastor looks over at me and I'm sitting there, guys, you can imagine. I am like, this is crazy. The pastor looks at me, he smiles at the lady as she's screaming, he looks at me and, and he points. He reaches into his little leather, dusty, backpack that he has and he pulls out a tambourine that got weird now now listen this ain't no normal tambourine this ain't this ain't like your church mama's tambourine this is a tambourine that has two-thirds of the rings missing this is a bloody sword it has grooves in it from where his hands hold the wood Title is he takes out his weapon. tambourine and he just starts walking around the house, shaking his tambourine, singing his worship song that he wrote in his indigenous language, singing about the power of breakthrough in Jesus. Now here's the thing, he's not even looking at the woman. He like goes into another dimension. The woman's screaming, doing crazy. And he just picks up his tambourine and he's smiling. He's walking around the house singing about Jesus, shaking his tambourine. He's just smiling. He's just smiling. 
And after about five minutes, I'm watching what he's not watching. This woman starts going through deliverance. You can just see these demons coming out of her one by one by one. And he's just sitting there. He is in another zone with the Lord, singing and worshiping. And then after about five to 10 minutes of this deliverance that's taking place as he's walking around the house, he noticed that it gets really quiet and the woman's laying flat on the ground. And he turns over and he looks at me and he looks at her and he goes like that. He walks over to the woman, puts his hand on her and he begins to speak to her. And you can totally tell she's come back to her feminine self. She's speaking in a normal voice. She's crying. She's weeping. And all of a sudden, the husband comes into the room. The husband brings the three kids into the room. We get the family together. He starts praying over the family. He takes his tambourine out. They all start worshiping. This is about a 15-minute ordeal. And then he looks at me and he goes, all right, let's go to church. Let's go. As if he does this every single day of the week. As we're walking out of the door, and by the way, we did see the altar that was built in the That's back. That's not a red flag? That, she, that this demon was gonna sacrifice her kids. I mean, it was crazy. As we're walking out of the door, I'm just sitting here going, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know how to explain this. I don't know what's going on. My theology is being rocked. This is wild. And as we walk out of the door, he turns and he looks at me and he goes, Brother Sean, he's like, worship brings the breakthrough. When we worship, the demons flee. This was my theology 101 on the power of breakthrough in worship. And I learned it from an Indian pastor when I was 16 years old. How many believe that worship brings a breakthrough? In yeah. Judges chapter six. So that was an interesting story. I feel like there are some red flags as it relates to that story. I mean, uh, particularly how that. nonchalant that is that was and how it was presented. I feel like, you know, the guy thought, okay, this guy's a 16 year old rube. Uh, I can totally just make this look, make myself look awesome by being even more casual about it. Okay. So you're, you're already uh, skeptical on, Oh, it's just a, uh, let's, uh, impress the new guy kind of thing yeah that's kind of what it sounds like and if he's 16 years old i'm you know i'm not gonna begrudge his lack of experience and if he grew up in the bethel reading environment i'm not gonna begrudge his lack of discernment or i'm not gonna expect him to have a level of discernment so there are already some recipes that this is an easy scam and the nonchalantness is certainly part of that I mean, I I don't know if the nonchalantness is uh, more like a stoicism, because I mean I don't know. It could it could it could just be again. I mean, when I heard this, I thought I'm like, wow, uh, kind of just made you drop whatever you were doing, listen to it. And again, I mean, to me, I mean, I thought the, I mean, to me, I kind of was just like, and eh, this is a little bit more believable than like claims of miracle at miracles at bethel church so it's just like on the, so i was more <laughs> yes you know, on one hand was, it's more i was believable grading on a, the, yeah yeah i was grading on a curve and so I, I don't deny that more supernatural stuff happens in more uh less materialistic countries i don't deny that but there is an element that does you know as, as far as storytelling goes that seems like a red flag or in in writing we call this foreshadow you know in this you know just imagine that the story's not over yet and then you find out at the end that it was a scam that was that would be called foreshadow these little details in the story such as the nonchalantness you know the predictable of five minute give me five minutes and um just knowing the expected outcome and then saying let's go to church right now as oh. though he does this every single day it just you know, these are little details that indicate a false story. I feel like you hear most about exorcisms probably in the third world, though. Um, but obviously, I mean, a lot of like third world, you know, a lot of a lot of them are more along the Pentecostal scale because they have a lot of like big churches that exist in like Africa and 
Parks of well, Asia. Probably and to be that. honest, you know, I've had Bobby Lopez tell me that he prefers doing missions with uh, Assemblies of God rather than the Southern Baptists because the Southern Baptists aren't very good at international missions. His sentiment, not mine necessarily, because I don't have experience in that area. But there is something to say that the Pentecostals are effective at missions, overseas missions. And I think that's highly, you know, highly evident in the history of uh, Christendom. If you look at the, the other of thing he does mention in the story that maybe, again, kind of might legitimize it to me would just be the mention of, uh, you know, you already have like a very pagan practice in that territory. And obviously, you know, if you go seeking the attention of demons, you're likely to find it. And I exactly. imagine... Exactly. I mean, I imagine exorcism isn't going to be, isn't that, I mean, I can't, I mean, I guess it could be arduous, but you know, when you get the impression in the Bible, you have the ones that are easy and then the ones that the disciples are just like, Hey, Jesus, can you take this one for me? We can't, we can't do it. 